What the heck is a seller credit? Well, guess what? It can reduce your cash to close and money out of your pocket for a transaction. So make sure and sit down and tune in. We're gonna talk about all the details you need to know about seller credits. My name is Ryan Skaggs and this is the Mortgage Minute. This channel is dedicated to everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the seller credits. Now, before we get into it, I'd be forever grateful for the subscribe, putting out weekly videos on the channel. Got 400 plus subscribers on my way to 1,000. I would love your support. It's absolutely free. Just click that subscribe button. Now, let's get into it. Seller credits. So basically, the number one thing you need to know about a seller credit, it's going to reduce your cash to close, but you really need to know how it's going on a contract. Now, your agent's going to be writing up the contract likely for you, but you need to understand as an informed, educated buyer what this means. So let's give you an example of a $300,000 home. Hey, why don't we offer 305 with a $5,000 credit towards our closing costs? If you're putting, say, 3% down, that's $9,000, the seller just covered $5,000 of your costs, right? So 9K of down payment plus closing costs, and the seller just picked up 5K. That is great. For those of you that might be a first time home buyer, or for those of you that might not have a lot of money saved, maybe that's both, this is a great, great way to be able to reduce that cash to close. Now you have to consider what is the seller netting? You offer 305 with a 5K credit, they're really only netting 300. So who knows what the property's worth in this hypothetical scenario, but with that said, you need to understand what is the seller net and you need to understand what your cash to close is. My tip for you about doing a seller credit or talking about a seller credit with your real estate agent or, or mortgage professional is that I want you to consider what type of market it is. And I also want you to put that seller credit in from minute one, the absolute first time you offer that seller credit should be in there. Do not try to apply it later. Okay. And the reason being is that in my experience of over 15 years, just under 15 years, let's round down, not up, is just under 15 years, is that a majority of the time when people add it later, it kills the deal or it, it bad things happen or it doesn't work out, right? So I want you to consider you start from the very first time, here's my offer, I'd like a seller credit attached to it. Now, if you wanna drop that credit later, so be it. But going in with it initially, just gives the transparency and the directness to everybody. This is what our offer is. This is what we'd like to have happen, right? So when you look at your closing costs and your down payment, the seller credit can then decrease those closing costs or cover those closing costs for you. They can't make your down payment for you, but they can cover a majority, if not all of your closing costs. I have done videos and I'll link above to my first time home buyer and down payment assistance program video series. Uh, five videos in the series, and we talked about how to use down payment assistance. And one of them I do reference that you could use down payment assistance from, say, a state agency or from a lender. We have our own proprietary down payment assistance program with a seller credit to go into a transaction with little to no money out of pocket. So absolutely something to consider that seller credit is basically just money that is set aside for you at closing to cover a portion of your closing costs. So that could be 1,000, 1,500, that could be 2%. You could use a percentage. You definitely want to keep it to say under like a 2%, under say a two, three, four, five k If it gets up and up and up, you're going to have a host of other problems, which I can explain in a whole nother video, or feel free to put your comments below. I'd be happy to engage in more specific questions for you. But definitely my advice is to keep it to that low end, say 2% or 3K or whatever it may be to be able to offset some of those costs, especially if you wanna come in and say, redo all the hardwood floors. That hardwood floor guy's gonna charge three grand. The seller just paid for you to be able to do those floors before you move in. So it's something to consider. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd be forever grateful for that subscribe. Got that 400 subscriber mark, trying to reach up to that mountain of a thousand. So I'd be forever grateful. Stay safe, put those questions below, and we'll see each other again very, very soon. Thank you.